Hi, I'm Simon Mannering, founder and author of We First. I'm here at Sustainable Brands and make sure you show other people you're good. We First is the name of the company, but more than that, it's a way of looking at the world in the sense that when I looked at all the different challenges, social, economic, that were going on around the world, it, I tried to distill it down into a mentality that was driving a behavior that wasn't really um, creating a sustainable approach to life. And m me first seemed to be an effective distillation of that. And so as a counterpoint to that, we first is a way of looking at the world as a, a mutually dependent global community. And so, you know, I think this is pretty obvious with every passing year now since 2008 because we saw our interconnectedness with the global economic meltdown and now we feel it directly in our lives with social media but what we first the book does is it lays out a vision for a repurposed private sector where based on this assumption that we're now a global community there's three elements to it the first is that there's a partnership between brands and consumers working together to achieve a goal based on shared values there is secondarily this idea that we build contribution into the act of consumption through something I call contributory consumption. So when you buy something, a small portion of that sale or the product or service goes towards a cause that people care about. And then thirdly, a presumption that if we're part of a global community, we work together to address these goals because we're more effective, faster, smarter, working together than alone. And so I outline this idea of the Global Brand Initiative, which is a coalition of brands bringing the best of the private sector to the social change space. And then to support you know, this sort of thesis, we first, the company, provides training, service, you know, training, consulting, and various products that will allow companies to become social brands, to define who they are, to articulate their purpose and tell that story in an effective way. And that often means training their employees first, and then reaching out to their customers in a meaningful way that you know resonates with their community so the community wants to support that business. So that's the thesis and that's what the company does. I think it's ineffective just to define the purpose of a company, tell it in a community facing way and go straight to consumers without f first making sure that it's integrated within the company itself. So when we first works with a brand We'll look at it and see, is there genuinely leadership buy-off in this, or is this just lip service? Is this just window dressing that the company wants to do? If it's not, we'll identify what that core purpose of the company is. Not what is admirable, like online dating, I like parachuting or hang gliding. It's like, no, what is true to the nature of the company? Distill that down and then tell that story in a community-facing way, and then share that with the employees. And if they are the ones who are the sort of first line of um, marketing for a company, you need to train them to be sort of social animals, to be brand ambassadors. So we first, whether it's through a seminar or an online training portal or actually live events, will come in and train those employees to tell that story effectively across social channels. So really, only then can you go out to consumers because otherwise, you'll say it, you'll tell consumers that you stand for something, the consumer will act on that basis and then they'll interact with somebody else in the company and they'll have a completely disconnected experience, in which case it just, it just exposes everything and we've seen too much of that. Consumers don't put up with it anymore. And what I love about social media, well, two things. Firstly, social media is just another channel. People treat it like the latest shiny squirrel, the holy grail. It's not. It's just like television or print or radio. It's just another way to communicate. What's unique about it is that it gives consumers or citizens a voice. And that was a, a new phenomenon three or four or five years ago when it became started to get this mass adoption. And it's now picked up momentum to the point that people are using it to serve their own interests, the larger interests of society as well. So the Arab Spring revolutions, we saw that sweep through. And now, you know, and they still continue in, in Syria and Egypt today. And then we see Occupy Wall Street. And then we see consumer pushback against Verizon and Bank of America and SOPA and so on. And really what's happening is there's this growing sense of empowerment amongst customers who are saying, hold it, if you want me to buy your stuff in this really, really tough economy, I want you to be more socially responsible because my friend has been out of work for two or three years and there's no funding for the public schooling system and the infrastructure is breaking down. And so they're saying, listen, I will vote for you if you at least make a contribution in some sense to things getting better. And so that gradual upgrading of expectations 
is keeping companies honest in a way that they never had to before. So I think it's a really exciting time because imagine the might of the private sector directed towards scaling social change. They're very good at making money. They're very good at making products and making them faster, cheaper, more effective, whatever it might be. But that efficacy, imagine that was brought to bear on critical social issues. And imagine at the same time, consumers rewarded them for doing that. And there's this new transaction going on, a meaningful transaction between social responsibility and consumer goodwill, loyalty and trust. And if that becomes just a part, it's naive to think it'd be the whole, but if that becomes part of the dynamic that goes on and drives commerce right now, we could absolutely transform the experience of life for so many people here in the United States and around the world. And I think that's an opportunity we shouldn't waste. Morally sustainable capitalism is, you know, sometimes it's a benefit to be outside a given industry. I didn't come from the sustainability space. I'm not an economist. I'm an advertising guy. And sometimes that gives you fresh eyes to look at a problem. And when I looked at the issue of sustainability, I always felt that you're only doing part, you're only solving part of the problem if you're only focusing exclusively on the environment. Because everything is so codependent now. Especially when you look at the private sector. You know, a company may be doing something that's great, that has great social impact, but if what they're doing also has negative externality impact on the environment, what's the, what's the point of that? You've got to look at it holistically, especially in the context of a global community. So, you know, one of the ways I expand out the understanding of sustainability is moral sustainability. And really, what good is it if we do a better job of treating the, you know, treating the environment and our carbon footprint and all these sorts of things, if we continue to add to the ranks of the poor every day, or more and more people die from preventable diseases, and basically the very engine of society breaks down. So I look at it in a larger sense and say, you know, our sustainability needs to be ethical, and by that I mean, you know, imposed by the rule of, the, of law, um, as we see with companies like B corporations and so on. It needs to be morally sustainable in the sense that it's conscionable, that we're actually making a functioning, functioning society that serves the interests of the majority rather than the minority. It needs to be um, socially sustainable, you know, so the majority of people need to be able to maintain a, you know, a decent living and a thriving community. Um, then it needs to uh, be economically sustainable. So it can't depend on this boom crash cycle that's going on and continues now, you know, where everybody's sort of fat and happy for a while and then everything falls apart cyclically. Um, and then finally environmentally sustainably. And for me, the moral sustainability, I mean, I'm a, I'm a dad who gives a damn, you know what I mean? And um, I've got kids and I think, you know, my father was a lawyer and I went through law school and uh, I think values were sort of subconsciously hammered into my head. And, um, you know, I think there's a lot of people in the world that look at the suffering of others and they empathize with it and they go, that's not okay, we need to do something about it. And I think more and more people are waking up to, the, to that these days saying, government's riddled with historic debt, philanthropy and non-profits can only do so much. This isn't going to change unless I do something. And with my particular skill set, We First is just a way to do that. And every one of us can play a role specific to our skill set. So whether you run a small business, whether you're CEO of a large corporation, whether you volunteer at a local pet shelter, whatever it is, all of us can make a little bit of a difference. And that's the only way we're going to change things at scale. You know, there is a growing excitement and momentum behind people who have been working in this space for years, you know, with, with their hearts and their souls, putting their effort into um, changing the conversation around sustainability. And it's getting public traction now. So it's time to double down, in a sense. And double down not just in terms of the expectations of other people, but in terms of the expectation of ourselves, in the sense that we need to expand sustainability out to include moral and ethical and, and social and economic sense. We need to make sure that we have that integrity within our own companies to the highest level, because that's an example that we set for others. You know, we need to make sure that you know, we motivate through marketing our customer communities so they reward our efforts so that we can actually make the business case for doing this. So I think it's a really exciting time, but it's that time where it's all business. It's like there's an opportunity here to scale the shift in thinking and behavior among the largest corporations in the US and around the world, in which case there's a function of their size 
we can dramatically scale change. You know, corporate, corporate behavior, commercial behavior, and who's, who knows what's possible if we do that? If only 5% of the private sector commits to meaningful change, it can transform the lives of millions of people around the world.